Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, December 1st, 2023. Let's get into it. We'll cover the two major stories in, in the world right now. I, I want to talk a little bit about Israel. I, I did not realize the damage that Hezbollah did uh, launching the missiles across the border. They, dam they destroyed billions of dollars worth of Israeli equipment. And uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was a measured response. Uh, I'm not sure how many Israelis they killed uh, with that missile barrage. Uh, constant, daily, while the Israelis were attacking uh, Gaza. Um, well, killing thousands of, of Palestinians, women and children. And, you know, uh, not too many Hamas because they were down in their caves. But anyway, so um, that and then 70,000 uh, Israelis were evacuated from the territory. So the and then, of course, we got the Houthis down on the coast there. They, they kidnapped uh, four Israeli ships. So the economic damage to Israel is just mounting. It was devastating. So do you think they entered into this pause or this ceasefire or whatever you want to call it? On their own? I don't think so. I think that they realize that, you know, how long can we continue this conflict and, and, and survive? You know, because right now, as far as I know, the United States is only sending them $18 billion that we're printing off of the printing press. It's not like we've got the money. We're $32, $33 trillion in debt. And I talked yesterday's video that uh, nobody's buying our treasuries anymore. So how long before how long can you continue to print money and deceive the American people into thinking that piece of paper that dollar bill is worth something? It, it it's gone on for long, far longer than I ever thought it would. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, it's uh, it's 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 just crazy. So let's get into the um, oh yeah, and of course we got to hit Ukraine for just a minute because we've lost there too. Uh, you know, what, 100 and 180 billion or whatever we sent to Ukraine, uh, printed money, more printed American money. When we've got an open border, we got fentanyl killing hundreds of thousands of Americans. I mean, we, you can go across the whole gambit, uh, but the Democrats are all for it, man. They want the destruction of the dollar. They want the destruction of the United States financial system. They want, and by the way, I'm sure there are many terrorists. And, and of course, you know, the same FBI... We're going to get into this story that, that is colluding against the American people is coming out now and saying, oh, there's going to be a huge terrorist event in the United States. Well, duh, because you engineered it, just like they engineered January 6th. And we'll get into that story here in just a minute. But anyway, what's happening is uh, the Russians are advancing on all fronts and they're killing. Oh, my God. The, 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 the numbers that I'm seeing now, it's just like the end of World War II. Uh, the number of Ukrainians that are dying, it's, it's just in huge numbers in the equipment. The last of their equipment is just getting wiped out because the, the Russians have advanced their technology. They're using the drones. They, they've they got electronic warfare to protect themselves from what Ukraine is, is managing to, to push across. And But the Ukrainians don't have anything. They're just wide open. So the drones are coming down, the, 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 the planes are dropping 500-pound bombs on them, the missiles are coming in. I mean, I, you know, I, and by the way, there, there was the, the craziest story. I was watching the uh, Military Summary Channel, definitely check that out on YouTube. Um, and he was talking about, there was this, there, what Ukraine's doing, they sent this beautiful young woman into the front lines and, uh, and she was evidently up there berating all of the Ukrainian soldiers to go attack the Russians. And she said, you're all cowards. You are. And she used all kinds of foul language and told them, you know, that, that they needed to do something, you know, that they couldn't just sit there and huddle in their tents because they're cold and they're miserable and they're wet. And, the, and the, you know, uh, they got little ammunition and they're not getting much support and their logistics sucks. And so finally an officer... <laughs> I, mean, I I don't want to laugh about this, but I, I just kind of picture this. He just had enough of her chatting away, and he just pulled out a gun and just shot her right in the head. Unbelievable. And I, uh, but, you know, I, I imagine the troops probably cheered. They were like, God, thank God you shut that chattering woman up. Uh, yeah, he, it could have been handled a bit more uh, di diplomatically. They could have just stuffed a gag in her mouth and, and tied her up and thrown her into a tent and put her on a vehicle and sent her back to Kiev uh, and said, you know, we don't, we don't want your propagandist here, uh, you know, talking to our troops in a bad way. But I guess uh, he got the thing. Um, on a funny note, I tell you what, I am looking forward to this. 
So Daily Wire trolls trans athletes in Lady Baller's movie. So the movie trailer is ap actually up on YouTube, and I hope maybe you've seen it because uh, they, they're advertising it quite a bit. I tell you what, I'm not a subscriber to the Daily Wire, but I imagine someday I'll get to watch this movie because it looks, I mean, the trailer's funny as hell. I was laughing my butt off watching the trailer because <laughs> it's, it's these powerful guys just beating the hell out of uh, some, some young women. I don't understand why women don't, uh, you know, it was my body, my choice, uh, the Me Too movement. And then now that the trans athletes are kicking the hell out of them, nobody says anything. I, I, I don't understand women. They, they'll, they'll badger the hell, because I'm, you know, I'm divorced now. They'll badger the hell out of their husband. You know, they'll, they'll tell him what a scumbag he is, but they won't stand up for themselves on, on the whole trans thing with, with competing in sports. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it just baffles the hell out of me. Maybe if you're a woman, you can explain that to me. So let's get into some of the news. This is uh, the first story. Uh, I don't have a clip, but if you go anywhere on YouTube or Rumble, uh, you can find clips of the, the new January 6th footage that's come out. And I'm going to read uh, a lot of this to you. I'll try to summarize it as best I can. But actually, uh, it's this Kyle Becker. And uh, I, you know, I'll just read the whole thing to you because he summarizes it. Though. I told you back when I was on Parlor at the time back in the day. And uh, when January 6th happened, I said it was a setup because Trump said, let's put 10,000 National Guard troops on the, on, the, on the thing. And then we knew that Nancy Pelosi rejected that and said, we don't need the, the National Guard troops because, you know, we don't want the optics. The optics is what the excuse was that she used, uh, that lying son of a gun or son of a woman. Let's just put that. And, uh, and so, you know, we knew it was a setup. Everybody knew it was a setup if you had any brain cells in your head. And so now with the new footage, we're finding out. I'm just going to read this to you. So it turns out there were at least 200 federal agents and undercover operatives working the Trump encampment plot on January 6th. So imagine that. Well, we know uh, uh, Epps. Remember Epps out there? And he's going, you got to storm the Capitol. You got to storm the Capitol. You know, th there's no barricades. You know, they're letting people in. You know, you see the people walking through, just kind of through the, looking around, going like, yeah, I've, I'm, I've never seen the Capitol building before. It's pretty cool, you know. So let's keep going. That's according to U.S. Representative Clay Higgins, uh, Republican, uh, Louisiana, who sat down for a recent interview on the matter. The FBI was not just participating in the January 6th, January 6th acts of violence. I suspect they had over 200 agents embedded within the crowd, and including agents, as they would call it, human assets inside the Capitol, dressed up as Trump supporters before the doors were open. So you can see how the, the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, they're all plotting against the Trump administration. And of course, we knew the Russia, Russia, Russia thing. That's all come out as a hoax. I mean, they, they tried to impeach him twice. Now, of course, the, the uh, uh, political cases are falling apart against Trump, so that's good. And when you track the, tra the text threads and the communication with those groups and find the origins of suggestions for, of potential violence or an active occupation of the Capitol on January 6th, you'll find that those messages were led by members of the groups that ended up to be the FBI agents that had infiltrated the group, Higgins said. So the FBI's involvement was deep, not just on January 6th, but on the days and weeks and months prior. There is now zero doubt that January 6th was a setup. Well, I knew that <laughs> back in 2000. I'm surprised that these people take so long to come to these conclusions. But let's just keep going. The FBI un unconstitutionally used NSA surveillance to track the extremist groups seeking to disrupt the event. It had federal informants embedded in multiple extremist groups, including the Proud Boys. Okay, so yeah, that, so they, they knew what was coming. You don't think this whole thing could have been prevented? No, they wanted it to happen. Are you seeing, you seeing the pattern here? All right, let's just keep going. So D.C. Mayor Bowser, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, former Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell and others refused to press for more National Guard. Like I said, Trump offered 10,000 National Guard. Despite it being documented on the record that former President Donald Trump wanted 10,000 troops, and it, yeah, 
to protect to protect the electrical electoral college. Remember what happened was because the electoral college didn't go down. That's how Biden got in. They didn't want the electoral college. Trump wanted it because he was hoping. Well, he was hoping Pence, that traitor, that would you know would would do something. But of course, you know, with with the whole January sixth thing, and I bet Pence was in on it. I, I I have no evidence of that. This is just speculation. But I bet Pence was in on this whole plot. But let's just keep going. Also, there were no centrally coordinated plot to overturn the results of the 2020 election, as FBI sources told Reuters in an August 2021 report. Indeed, that was the entire point of the election challenges during the convening of the electoral. Like I said, Trump wanted the electoral college to go through. This was a plot to make sure it didn't. If Donald Trump wanted to overturn the 2020 election results, he would not have disrupted the electoral college. He would have continued to pursue his legal challenges and his constitutional right to challenge the electoral slates in Congress. Trump would not have sent in an unarmed, by the way, that's another thing. I've made videos about this. You don't send in a bunch of unarmed uh, extremists, you know, because I obviously, since the Capitol Police were in on it and the FBI was in on it, and of course, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats were in on it. They didn't want these people to be armed, so they made sure that, you know, there were no guns or anything. You don't, if you're going to pull off a coup, you stupid freaking Democrats, you bring a tank up, you line the Capitol Police up in front of the Capitol, and you blow the hell out of them. That's what you do. Or you got machine guns, and you got people with guns, and that's that's how a coup takes place in any country. Look at Ukraine. What happened in 2014? There were snipers on the roofs. They were shooting people right and left. That's how the whole coup that the engine, the United States engineered to take down the Ukrainian government. That's what a coup is. All right, so let's keep going. Nonetheless, this ridiculous uh, partisan narrative has constituted the basis for prosecuting a former president and what he devolved into a partisan show trial and tear to election interference. It's not only ironic, but a disgrace to our entire justice system. January 6th was a Fed and Democrat manufactured riot to frame a sitting president and carry out election interference in 20 well in 2024 they're hoping they were hoping that was going to carry over to 2024 well Trump's way ahead in the polls now I like it it's going to be poetic revenge if it all works out all right so getting on to the next one um we got Danny Taggart this was uh or Dagny D-A-G-N-Y Dagny if you definitely follow her on Twitter or X excuse me uh, Ursula von der Leyen said that Ukraine has fulfilled almost all requirements to, for the start of negotiations on ascension to the EU and called Ukrainian reforms deeply impressive. <laughs> Is this woman deranged? She, uh, we call her Ursula von der Crazy. Uh, well, that's what the Duran calls her. You know, I, I, I give the you got to give attribution to the people that you steal material from. I'm stealing it from the Duran or Alex on the Duran, and he calls her Ursula van der Crazy. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Ukraine is, there's not going to be nothing left of Ukraine once the Russians are done. Oh, my God, these people are so freaking stupid. Here's another one, because I'm from Michigan, and that's why I, I bookmarked this one. Michigan commits to 100% carbon dioxide-free electricity generation by 2040, just the news. So all the people in Michigan that, that elected Whitmer after she locked you in your homes you know, roped off your drug stores and, and kept your kids out of school for, good God, what, a year, year and a half, and then they voted her in again? I the people in, I thank God I'm out of Michigan. I live in Florida. I, 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 don't, I wouldn't even want to be there. So uh, here's the next one, Game of Trades. This is an interesting channel. Uh, well, uh, X uh, count. The cost to buy a home is now 52% higher than the cost to rent. So... Let me give you some advice. If, if you're out there and you're a young person, uh, go rent. Renting is not that bad, okay? You don't need to go into a real estate, and, and real estate's going to crash. It's crashing now. <clears throat> the whole market's going to get cut in half because what you have is you always think there's always a balance, okay? So if rents are cheap right now and, and homes are expensive, guess what? It's going to all balance out and home prices are going to come down and rents are going to go back up. So then when the rent's going up and the housing price goes down, then you're going to want to go into a house and buy it. Maybe 
And I actually entered in, I mean, you, they always tell you to own the house outright yourself because you don't want to enter into a relationship like that with other people. But I went in with a couple of other people and it worked out real well. Uh, but you got to have all the proper legal documentation and definitely hire a lawyer to make sure that you do it right. So let's keep going. The Russian armed forces broke through the defenses of the Ukraine armed forces near Artemovsk. And, well, that's the Russian name for it. A-R-T-E-M-O-V-S-K. I, -E -O -O -K. I <laughs> can't pronounce this Russian stuff. And established full control of the village. Uh, yeah, and I knew that this, Karuvmov, Kar and managed to push the Ukrainian soldiers uh, from Rabutye, and, uh, and of course, there's a couple of other towns. Anyway, that's the, it's, uh, the, the Russians are winning. Let's just put it that way. And then finally, we'll finish up with ZLATTI71. Uh, I follow him on uh, X. Uh, he gives me a lot of good information. Ukrainian militants left behind almost 200 bodies of dead comrades as they fled their positions near Donetsk. This was reported by an advisor to the head of the DPR, Yan Gagin. He added that the abandoned Russian positions near Donetsk were strewn with an enormous number of dead Ukrainian servicemen. The enemy did not try to evacuate them, he added. The bodies of dead Ukrainian fighters were eventually evacu evacuated by Russian forces, the advisor noted. It would not be surprising if Kiev said that 200, Russians, 200 Ukrainians were missing. And I will add to that that there was probably a lot of um, Ukrainian women and young very young, probably teenagers uh, in that mix. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.